hello wwe fans and welcome to faces and heels your podcast for professional wrestling in particular the wwe here on the kb radio network i am your host kevin reeds how is everybody doing out there in the wwe universe normally i know it sounds weird normally i come and we discuss upcoming premium live events on the wwe or coming from the wwe but it's some big news that just happened just took place on this past edition of smackdown that has shook the foundations of the upcoming wrestlemania xl or wrestlemania 40 if you will and i wanted to talk about it because I know a lot of people are torn. If you're anything like me, I'm pretty sure you're torn here because the WWE has put us in the biggest catch 22 scenario in history. (laughs) Uh, Like the rock said last night after uh, SmackDown went off that uh, they made history at SmackDown last night. And he did. They really did. Because never before have we entered uh, WrestleMania with so much anger, excitement, um, frustration. I mean, whatever. Whatever emotion you can put on it, that's what, how, how most of us are feeling when we woke up on Saturday morning after what took place at the end of SmackDown. Um, I, I'm, I'm so confused. I'm so confused, even though... There are elements of this that I like. I didn't want it now. And I think all of this that has transpired, it it has been a result of timing and unfortunate timing at the same time. We have so many injuries going into WrestleMania. You know, we have the uh, CM Punk is injured. Seth Rollins is injured. Um, A couple of other. (laughs) <laughs> a couple of others are injured as well, but it it threw off plans, and that's to be expected. That that's this is nothing new. Um, that we have injuries that kind of derail plans going into WrestleMania. Happens at every sport, you know. The Super Bowl is coming up next week. You know, you have injured players who's not going to play on uh, certain teams. Uh, that's going to affect that game, and so it is. Ha- it happens. It happens, and I knew once. CM Punk got hurt that that kind of threw off a lot of things. Actually, when Seth Rollins was hurt, I knew that was going to throw off a lot of things because he was really the first piece on this board that was removed. And even though he says he's going to rehab and be ready for WrestleMania, um, it kind of took some of the zest out of it. And so whatever happened after the Royal Rumble, it was a foregone, foregone conclusion that whoever challenged Seth Rollins at WrestleMania was going to beat him. You know, he's not 100%. But in in any event, let's go back. We have to go back a ways to uh, set up what took place last night on SmackDown. And I'll give my opinions as we roll through them. Uh, How far back should I go? uh, Let's go back. Let's go back to Survivor Series, War Games, if you will. This is when the excitement hyped up uh, as far as the Seth Rollins element of it. That's when we saw the return of CM Punk. And immediately, they planted that seed. They being WWE, Triple H, everybody in creative, uh, the superstars who were involved, they set it up immediately when Seth, uh, not Seth, but when... uh, CM Punk came from the back. His music hit. The crowd went nuts. They were in Chicago, of course. It was electric. You had goosebumps. Uh, the hairs on your arms were sticking up. It was a beautiful moment. Beautiful return. And you have Seth Rollins going just insane in the ring. Then he comes out of the ring. He has to be held back because of his hatred towards CM Punk. It, it all right, that seed was planted. They planted it, they watered it, uh, they nurtured it, 
oh, that tree was growing. It, it, it was growing. And so immediately, if you've been watching wrestling as long as I have, you know that that was set up for WrestleMania. Seth Rollins versus CM Punk. Whether it was for the title or not, really didn't matter. You just wanted to see that match. You know, it. I'm still excited to see that match whenever it happens. And so we have that element. We have the element of Dwayne Johnson, formerly known, well, not formerly because he has that name back now, The Rock. The Rock has been teased as an opponent to Roman Reigns for the better part of two, three years now. And all because of the seat at the table element, you know, the tribal tr- chief element of it. And it, 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 it's good storytelling. Of course, with the bloodline, it has been great. It has been great since they started. It, it lost some steam as of late because we don't have uh, Jay there. You know, you don't have Sammy Zane and uh, Kevin Owens involved there anymore. And it, it it's kind of lost a little steam in the past few months, but it's still one of the best factions in history. It's up there with the NWO in the early, I'm talking early NWO. Not when NWO, it was Wolfpack, uh, Nick Knack, and Paddywhack NWO, all that stuff. <laughs> you know, I'm talking, it's up there with DX. It's up there with uh, Bullet Club type factions, you know? And so, uh, Bloodline, especially the storyline, probably the best storyline in wrestling. You know, you got to go back to the mega powers exploding to have a better storyline than what we've received over the past three years with the bloodline. And you add in the rock, which is such a great transition, a great next step, or uh, dare I say, a way to finish that story. You know, The Rock versus Roman for the head of the table, not for the Universal Championship. That match didn't need a championship. But, you know, when you sit back and think about it, Roman needs to have that belt when he fight, fights The Rock uh, because that adds a different element to his stance as the tribal chief. And so I get all that. You know, because initially, I, in my mind, I was like, well, they don't need the belt to fight. They, they don't, which, which they don't. You know, The Rock, that sells it right there. And so, but I, I understand. I understand. And so it was initially going to happen last year at WrestleMania. It didn't happen. Uh, the rock wasn't ready and you know, whatever, uh, uh, Roman faced Cody and probably the best match you can get. You know, I think he pushed and he made that statement on SmackDown, uh, talking about Cody Rose, Cody Rose pushed Roman Reigns in probably the best match he has had in recent memory it was a great match for wrestlemania uh even though he was cheated out of the championship in that match and so cody didn't get to finish the story that's fine that's fine uh we got time no need to rush and so we fast forward to day one which was on raw uh the first monday in january of this year Lo and behold, The Rock returns and gets into a bra- a little promo brawl with Jinder Mahal. Nice promo, nice segment on Raw. Um, after that, he drops the biggest pipe bomb since CM Punk dropped it <laughs> 10 years ago, and that was he should sit at the head of the table, planting that seed. And so immediately... Everybody's excited. The world went nuts. Understandably, I was one of them. And I'm like, yes, Roman in the rock at WrestleMania. That, that, no brainer. Good deal. But we heard nothing else from that. After that, it went radi- radio silent uh, until this past Friday. Now, the Royal Rumble. The Royal Rumble happens. Cody wins. Uh, 
But during the Royal Rumble, that, that wasn't the biggest news, Cody Rhodes winning uh, back-to-back. It was that CM Punk got injured in that match. Uh, he tore his tricep, I believe, and that put him out of the picture for uh, Seth Rollins. Because the initial plans from WWE, it was going to be Seth versus CM Punk at WrestleMania. Cody versus Roman at WrestleMania. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Uh, that's a that's a marvelous card right there. Each each one of those matches, I would assume, was going to main event each night. Because let's not forget that uh, this is a two-night event. At least I think it's still a two-night event. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was going to be the deal. All right. Well, life got in the way. Uh, CM Punk got injured pretty much taking him off the table. Now we have to do a lot of pivoting. Here's another element. And this, this is probably the biggest element surrounding all of the changes here. It's not the superstars that's in the ring. It's not the uh, injuries or different plans that just, you know, poofed out of midair. And they're like, okay, that's a good idea. Let's go with that. This isn't a fly-by-night type decisions, even though they are in a way, but there's a reason behind those fly-by-night decisions. What The problem here is Vince McMahon. These sexual assault allegations and uh, John Laronitis suing uh, Vince McMahon and, and, and the WWE as well, which is kind of crazy, but all of this drama going on right now when wwe is at a high this is the wwe's highest peak right now you know they're riding a rocket straight to the moon <clears throat> as far as uh money especially but as far as attention being drawn to it and so to have this dark cloud of vince mcmahon who resigned from the WWE's uh, or TKO's board. And so he is no longer involved with WWE or TKO. That's that. He's over. This is the first time in, since its conception that WWE does not have a McMahon involved in any shape, form, or fashion, technically. Now, Triple H is married to Stephanie McMahon, so I guess you could say eh, they're still involved. But nobody with the last name. McMahon <laughs> is involved with the WWE. And so you have all this going on. And I think all of this negative press and uh, the stories daily. I mean, stuff is coming out daily surrounding Vince McMahon and his antics. And it's putting a black eye on this company. And it's not WWE. This is TKO. And TKO is a conglomerate they're not we're not doing this <laughs> this is not what we signed up for and so what's the biggest thing you can do what can, what can take away attention from vince mcmahon and his uh genetic jackhammers or what <laughs> you know what can deviate attention from that Let, let's bring back the rock and so you have the rock showing up this Friday on SmackDown after Cody Rhodes. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself on Monday night raw Cody Rhodes comes out and he's about to announce who he's challenging at WrestleMania 40. Of course we know that he already said that he was going after Roman. So he's about to announce that and who comes limping down the aisle is none other than Seth Rollins. And at that moment I knew <laughs> At that moment, I knew, okay, they're pivoting. They're pivoting, and they're setting up Roman and The Rock. They have to be. That's the only solution. That's the only logical choice you can do involving Seth Rollins, unless they didn't have a true, any other uh, uh, contingency plan involving Seth Rollins after CM Punk. And we're going to get a triple threat to combine the titles. You know, Seth versus Roman versus Cody. 
okay, I would have been cool with that too. But at the same time, I'm like, well, we already combined about 50 titles with <laughs> with Roman, which I still don't understand how he's the undisputed champion, and there's still a heavyweight championship belt out there. But that's neither here nor there. And so Seth comes out, cuts a prom- promo to Cody about the championship, what championship he earned, what championship – Dusty would have won it. And it's this one. It is the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, which is which was a compelling argument, I must say. I mean, my man went as far as to poo-poo on the undisputed WWE World uh, uh, Universal Championship. I mean, he went ham. And I'm like, man, is this a work or a shoot? Because he really going ham on, <laughs> on Roman right now. But once again, I get it. You know, he's trying to sway it to the World Heavyweight Championship match. Now, I would have enjoyed it more. I I would have been on point with it if Seth Rollins wasn't limping to the ring to make this argument. If he wasn't standing in the ring, putting all shifting all of his weight on his good leg. You know, <laughs> it just took it just took some of the the zap out of it. I'm like, well, and I'm looking at Cody and Cody looking at it like, okay, you're making an argument, but there's no fight there. You know, there's no fight there. It was a no brainer that Cody would beat him at WrestleMania in this condition, a no brainer. And so, uh, he didn't make his decision. He said he'll think about it and he left out the ring. So we fast forward to this past Friday, finally got there people. And so we get to SmackDown, and Cody is there. He has Pharaoh with him. And he goes into the ring after Roman Reigns cuts a promo on Seth <laughs> and everybody else. Uh, I love Roman Reigns, man. And with Cody making it clear that his one goal since he returned to WWE is to win the Undisputed Universal Championship. It seemed obvious that Rose was going to issue a challenge to Roman Reigns following the Royal Rumble victory, you know, and lo and behold, he comes out to the ring. Now, following his WWE return in April of last year, Rhodes announced that his main goal was to win that championship in honor of his late father, Dusty, the American dream. Uh, He was unsuccessful last year at WrestleMania uh, due to some interference with the bloodline and whatnot. And, it was, it was just a lot. It, I was upset. I'm, I'm not going to tell you a word a lie. I was upset when he lost at WrestleMania last year, but you know, who said that he had to finish the story then? Okay. That's cool. That's cool. I was thinking more along the lines of SummerSlam where we didn't get back around to it. And now here we stand again. So Cody comes out. He re- reiterates that's the belt he wants. You know, Seth made a good argument, but that's the belt I want. And I want you. And I want to take it off of you. And okay, so there you have it. If they would have left it at that, it would have been no problem this morning. But unfortunately, he kept talking. He said, <laughs> but it won't be at WrestleMania. And at that moment, it was like, okay. <laughs> it was like, okay, I know where this is going. I know I know where this was going. I'm pretty sure you know where this was going. The WWE as a uh, universe as a whole knew where this was going. And then the rock music hit. And this is where the emotions went on a roller coaster ride for me and many others. The problem is it's not so much that the rock is facing or allegedly quote unquote facing Roman at WrestleMania because everybody wanted to see that. That's not the problem It's at the expense of Cody Rhodes. That makes it a problem. What was the point of winning the Royal rumble? It, it, it stains that victory. It really does. Cause now it feels like you're selling 
for the World Heavyweight Championship. You know, it. come on, man. And let's be real. That's a secondary title. It's, <laughs> that's not the main title. And that's what Cody was basically saying. And that was another thing that just made this feel so weird. Cody cut that promo, putting the uh, uh, undisputed WWE Universal Championship over, you know, so hard, so heavy. That's the belt that they took from my dad in Madison Square Garden. That's the belt that I want to win. You know, he put that over only to come right back and say, I'm not going to challenge you at WrestleMania. And the rock comes out and the rock. They do the, uh, Carl Weathers, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, 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 shake from predator RIP to Carl Weathers, by the way. And, he gives him a hug and whispers something in Cody's ear, you know, I guess to apologize or something. I don't know what he could have told. I don't know what he could have told Cody, what what you could have told him. Um, I'm sorry. I'm taking your spot. I mean, cause that's what happened. He, I don't know what happened. I don't know what he could have told him at that moment. And props to Cody. If you're looking at his face during that promo, during that segment, you can tell this, this didn't go over well with Cody. He did not like this, but he's a, he's a trooper. You know, I got to respect that. He's a trooper. He he fought through it and let it, let it go forward. But before he walked out the door, he let everybody know how he felt. And I respect that to the highest level as well. But we get to stare down with the rock and Roman Reigns. That, that was all fine and good. But we find out later on, through reports and certain sources that it was the rock that pushed hard for this. Now let's not forget the rock is on the board of TKO. And so this Vince McMahon issue that I touched in on, he's in, he's in that, you know, he, he is part of that discussion that's happening at the corporate offices and stuff, you know? And so, we know that Dwayne Johnson is not a stupid man. This is a very successful businessman, a uh, very great, a uh, very great, a great entertainer and all this other good stuff. So he knows about putting on a good face and promoting and self-promoting and all that other good stuff. And so what would be the best way to, to kind of draw attention away from that is the rock. He is one of the most popular wrestlers of all time. I don't care whatever. You know, The Rock haven't wrestled in in years. I don't even know if he's in ring shape, you know. Yeah, he looked amazing, you know, because <laughs> he always looked amazing. The dude works out. He's an animal. He looked amazing. But that don't mean anything as far as running the ropes and taking bumps and uh, getting Superman punched and speared and all that other good stuff. Can he hold up? Because let's not forget. He had that long absence before he came back at WrestleMania to uh, face John Cena and he tore his bicep or his tricep, one of them steps. And, <laughs> you know, he couldn't, couldn't, um, really couldn't hang. It, you know, he's been out of the ring. It, he's been out of the ring. It, it's not like riding a bike. You don't just hop on it and it, off you go. It's, it's a lot of work in wrestling. Uh, but, uh, I mean, Axiom Punk, same thing. And he wasn't out that long. <laughs> he wasn't out that long. Well, I'll take that back. Because when he went to uh, AEW, he was out for years. And he stayed hurt in AEW. <laughs> it seemed like every month he was getting hurt. Uh, or at least every pay-per-view he got hurt. And was out for months. Come back. Get hurt again. Out for months. Come back. Get hurt again. <laughs> and now he leaves there. Well, he didn't get hurt in that fight backstage. And they, he, <laughs> he was doing the hurting. But we get to WWE first match, quote unquote, the, the Royal Rumble he's in, he gets hurt. You know, so it, it, your body got to keep, it's a thing. It's a, it's, it's, it's a uh, repetitive thing that your body, muscle memory. I think that's the word I was trying to find. Muscle memory. And I'm pretty sure his muscles have forgotten a lot over those years. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be a banger of a match. Of course, let's be honest. Let's be honest and be real. And I'm a fan of The Rock. The Rock was never 
a banger in the ring. <laughs> he wasn't the greatest. Yes, he's a sports entertainer. That's exactly who he is. He entertains. But as far as putting on five-star matches, I have never seen a five-star match from The Rock. Maybe uh, WrestleMania 17, which I was present for. I guess I'm being a little biased. But, yeah, I, I think that was probably the best match from The Rock, and he lost that match against Stone Cold. That's when um, Stone Cold turned heel. Uh, but I, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I like the story of it. You know, The Rock versus Roman. It, it, logically, it makes a lot of sense. Even without that uh, Vince McMahon cloud over everything, it, it makes sense to have this match. But I just don't like the fact that it's at the expense of Cody Rhodes. You know, I, I'm a huge fan. I, I never, well, let me say that. I, I, I don't think I ever told you guys. I never was the biggest Cody fan. I mean, going back to Dash and Cody Rhodes and Stardust and all that, I wasn't a big Cody Rhodes fan. You know, I thought he was all right. I thought he was a mid-carder. But when he went to AEW and reinvented himself, yeah, I got on board with him. And this is me not watching AEW that often. But I kind of got on board with him. Happy when he returned. Uh, love his promo work. I mean, he's the son of Dusty Rose. Dusty Rose, eh, who is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, uh, especially promo-wise. Maybe not in-ring work, but promo-wise. And uh, that's, you could, you could hear the cadence of Dusty when Cody talks <laughs> on the mic. And that's, I guess that's my reasoning for getting behind him and cheering for him because of my feelings towards Dusty. Uh, but I really enjoyed it. I became a big fan of his, and I love I love his ring work and his toughness, man. When he wrestled Seth Rollins, what was that, at Hell in a Cell, I believe, with that torn peck? Oh, man, that was brutal. And he, he, he put on a match. He earned my respect. If I didn't have any, he earned it that day. Uh, but, uh... Uh, short story long, I, <laughs> I I really wanted Cody to finish the story, man. I mean, I don't know, man. It, like I said, it's a catch-22. I, I want to see Rock versus Roman, but I also want to see Cody go over. And I don't want to see Cody face a broken-down Seth Rollins. We've seen this before. We've seen him. They had that long feud when he returned to WWE. What it was like three or four pay per views in a row they fought. I think Cody beat him every time, and we're gonna get this again at this WrestleMania. And this time, uh, Seth Rollins is hurt, so it just doesn't have that same appeal. Now anything can happen within the next month and a half. Seth Rollins can come out and uh, be fully rehabilitated and looks great. That's fine, but at the same time, that's not the match that we all wanted. But at the same time, I understand this is why the match, these are the reasons these matches are happening. I guess I could, should say it like that. But I don't know, man. I, I just wish things were different, but it was just a matter of timing. Because let's not forget, also, uh, Dwayne Johnson has a lot of irons on the fire. You know, he he's a actor he's a uh he owns the ufl football league which is about to start up in a couple of weeks uh he he's in he's producing films he has all these other businesses i mean the man is i don't see where he sleeps <laughs> i don't see how he sleeps he has so much going on in films they uh, you know they just announced that he's going to be in uh a couple of films he has uh lined up to start shooting soon and so that window was on a, is on the verge of closing. So they had to strike when the iron was hot. And so, like I said, this this is a victim of timing more than anything. Yeah, and I'm sorry Cody had to go through it or is going through it. And it was just the look on his face that stuck with me. You know, he he was being a good company guy and stepping aside, but. At the end of the day, I know he was hurt. I'm not. Of course. 
I mean, you robbed me out of a WrestleMania main event again, you know? Well, not again, because he had it last year, but I, this could have been the crescendo of his story. But that's that. Uh, I would like to know, what did you feel about this? I, you know, I was looking on the X, or t- formerly known as Twitter, and I was reading some comments of people, and understandably, y'all are hot. <laughs> <laughs> y'all are fighting mad about this and i get it because i i feel the same way but i understand the reasoning behind it and but it still doesn't take the bad taste out of my mouth i, I still don't like it but it is what it is i would like to know all of you out there what do you feel about this are are you cool with roman reigns taking on the rock at wrestlemania Instead of Cody Rhodes, uh, do you feel bad for Cody Rhodes? Or, or are you not a Cody Rhodes fan and you feel like, good, <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> he don't deserve it. I would like to know your feelings, honestly. Email the show, kbradiopodcast at gmail.com. You can also look me up on all social media platforms. Just search for the KB Radio Network. You can also subscribe to the KB Radio Network channel on YouTube and like this video if you don't mind don't forget about the five stars the reviews and sharing this show if you're listening on apple Podcasts, spotify iHeartRadio, wherever you are currently listening to faces in heels everybody thank you for joining me for this chat about the latest developments in wwe involving wrestlemania xl where cody rhodes steps aside to allow the rock to take on Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Well, who knows? This may change too. <laughs> Dude, this may change too. Cause we still have time. We still what? Got a month and a half, something like that. Uh, maybe two months. When is I don't know when it is. But anyway, we have time. We have plenty of time. Uh, Elimination Chamber is right around the corner, so th- something may come out of that that changes the course again. And so. <laughs> We shall see. This is an ongoing developing issue, and I'm going to be here to cover it. Everybody, enjoy the rest of your day, your weekend, your week, your night. Whenever you are checking out Faces and Heels, I'll speak to you on the other side. Until then, peace.